All right, well, DDP, thank you so much for just giving us a few minutes of your time to talk about your book. It's great. It's a page turner. I have been reading it personally and helping with some things in my life. So thanks for call, you know, coming back to the podcast and talking a little bit about the book. You know, positively unstoppable, the art of owning it. You know, um, I, I think it, it can help just about anybody. Uh, it, it, it's not about, you know, fitness or nutrition or uh, health or wellness. You know, it's about all of that, you know, but more than anything, it's about the story we tell ourselves. You know, it's not... It's really trying to get people to get rid of that, you know, that, that, that devil on their shoulder. We're always going to have that, but the self-doubt. And, and it's trying to help people build their confidence more than anything. And I use examples from my own life because a lot of people would think, man, you've lived a blessed life. Like, I really have. You know, especially, you know, this latter part of my life, I've been so blessed on so many different levels, but <laughs> I had so much adversity between growing up as a kid, becoming a professional wrestler at 35 and a half, I mean, everybody, everybody down me, like, I've been being told I can't do stuff my entire life, I, I just, you know, what Positively Unstoppable is about is getting people to understand that it doesn't matter who tells you what you can't do, only one person has to believe in you. And that's you. Now, the other side of that is most people don't believe in themselves. You know, you know, people like I guess the golden rule is people treat people the way they want to be treated. You know, the way treat, they treat themselves. Oh, uh, no, nah, I really don't. I, I like the platinum rule: treat me the way I want to be treated. Because most people treat themselves like shit. They talk about themselves in a seriously negative manner. They pull themselves down all the time, and, you know, they just have no self-respect. Most people, they really don't, you know, and you can change that. That's the beauty of that. And, again, that's what Positivity Unstoppable is all about. You know, me giving examples, not just from my life, but from so many people that I found that I've worked with that were stuck. You know, they were broken. And they used a lot of the principles that I teach in the book that uh, help them get unbroken. And that's one thing I do like about this because when I was reading the book, um, I just want to, I don't want to give too much away because I want my listeners to read this book. But one of the main things that you talk about is the importance of owning it. Whatever you bring to the table, you have to own that. You know, um, if anybody's seen the uh, resurrection of Jake the Snake, I mean, the, the place that, that we lived at, I called the accountability crib. And it was a friend of mine named Christina who actually named it that. She gave me a list of names. I reached out on the internet and said, tell me what I should call this place. Jake's moving in here. Scott just moved in, you know, and, uh, you know, we're, we're trying to get everybody to be accountable for everything you're doing and blah, blah, blah. You know, and I never really think about the accountability crib. She named it that. You know, she, she threw it out as a suggestion, and I thought that is what this place is. And when it comes to owning it, it's all about being accountable and, and you know, knowing who you are and being willing to not beat yourself down because that's the last thing, you know, that I think people need to do, you know, because there's so much personal self-doubt and there's so much, there's so much what I call emotional gravity. You know, no one can pull you down more than you. And in, in our personal lives and our professional lives, each and every one of us are constantly hit on the phone doing the workshop that, hold on, uh, my wife just came by just talking. <laughs> um, you know, in our personal lives and our professional lives, each and every one of us are constantly hit with one adversity after another, most of which we have no control over. But if we work at it, and this is what I teach you in Positive and Unstoppable, if you actually put the work in, you literally can control the way you react, how you adapt, and how you take action. And a lot of it will be determined on how you breathe. And I teach people how to breathe. I teach them, you know, I teach them how to 
change the inner dialogue. You know, the story you tell yourself, that, that little voice inside you. You know, and, and when you start to control that, well, man, anything's possible. I just did a, a, um, a motivational Monday on, um, on uh, my DP Yoga Now app two weeks in a row. One, day, one, one week I talked to Cody Rhodes. And if you would have talked to Cody Rhodes leading the WWF two and a half years ago, then you would have caught somebody who was self-doubt, but believed in himself way more than anybody else did. And he got on that independent working trail that, you know, really wasn't all that great, but it was the best it's been in some time. And he hooked up with the Young Bucks, and he built those relationships. And then a year later, they're talking about doing all in. <laughs> and you know, anybody who's a wrestling fan, they know what happened. Mm-hmm. And it was something that was super special. And they sold the place out in less than 30 minutes, over 11,000 seats. Mm-hmm. And it resonated, it ripped through the entire wrestling community. And then a guy named Tony Khan, who owns the Jacksonville Jaguars, a billionaire. I always tell people all the time, and I talk about this impossibly unstoppable. You never know who's watching. Like, for me, <laughs> it was Hulk Hogan. And it, it, first of all, I'll go back all the way. Without... Dusty Rhodes, there is no Diamond Dallas Page. Without Jake Stick Roberts, there is no three-time world champion. Without the both of them, and Randy, and Flair, and Hogan, and all those guys, there's no Hall of Famer. But along the way, I have moved that bar that made people start to believe in me. It wasn't just me. Like Hulk said to me, you never know who's watching. You segue from like what happened with uh, Tony Khan and Rhodes and the Young Bucks. It was 1994, and I had a match on a road. I was on a loop uh, uh, in over in UK and Germany, and I'm the first match out of the box every night with Jim Duggan. After about my fifth match, I walked through the curtain and Hulk grabbed me and he pulled me over. And he said, how are you doing it? And I go, doing what, Hulk? What did I do wrong? He goes, because you do anything wrong. He goes, how do you keep getting so much better? And then he answered the question for me. He said, I've been, you know, I've been watching you. And I don't see you on TV that often. But every time I do see you, you've got some new move that you hit at, you know, you hit and you come up and you get the people involved. He goes, that's the key to all of this, getting the people involved. He said, you're doing it. He goes, but every time I see you, you're getting a little better, and now I see you out there. I've been watching you the last couple nights. I'm the first match. This is Hulk Hogan. I have no idea before that's this awesome. moment. And he says, this is what they're doing with you, Right. They're putting you on the road so you can learn your craft and occasionally putting you on TV. I said, no, Hulk, that's not it. I said, the only reason I'm on this tour is because I got a smoking hot wife who walks me to the ring, and my last name is really Falkenberg. (laughs) I said, the Krauts love their Germans, and that's how I got on this card. I said, I haven't been on the road in four months. He said, how are you doing it then? I said, I went down back to the power plant where I learned how to wrestle. And this applies to every single thing, like every single thing in life. The more you actively try to teach someone something that you know, every time you teach them, it's like I was teaching those young guys down there. The more I taught them, the more I learned. The more I learned, the better I got. And he said, what you're doing, you just need to keep doing it. And then he said this to me. He said, it's not this year or next year or even the year after. But somewhere down the line, I believe that you have the ability to draw huge money with me. 
and he walked away. Now, all I could think about at that moment was, did Hulk Hogan just say he's been watching my matches? Hulk watched everybody. Like, who can you draw money with that? If you go four years from that moment, Hogan and Hogan are on The Tonight Show. While they're talking to Jay on The Tonight Show, I come out of the wings with a guy named Carl Malone, who, by the way, is the second leading scorer of all time in the NBA. I come out of the wings with Carl Malone and we shoot our angle. By the way, my idea. Because <laughs> I knew Carl was going to be on The Tonight Show. And we knew Rodman was going to be. And then I was like, yo, Eric, look what's happening here. Eric got on the phone, talked to the producers of NBC. Next thing you know, Jay Leno's in the middle of the four of us. It was the second biggest pay-per-view in the history of WCW. That's about manifesting a dream in reality. Now let's go back over to Cody Rhodes and Tony Khan. Cody has no idea. Him and the Bucks and all the guys who are a part of that, they have no idea. All Cody knows, he may only get to do this once. You want to talk about talking about from his daddy's loins. Like, Dusty raised me in the business. <laughs> I was there in Florida Championship Wrestling watching him try to revive that production. And then it's not happening, and he goes to WWE to become a polka dotted guy, and then he comes back. You know, I tell people all the time, it's not about who you know or who knows you. It's about who's willing to say they know you. Who's willing to pick up the phone and make the call and say, you gotta, you, you gotta do something with Diamond Dallas Page. Like this guy, he's doing something really amazing. Like someone picking up the phone and saying, putting their name on you. That's what Dusty did for me over and over again. And now I'm, I'm at all in and I'm watching Cody run the production team backstage, super chill, just like his old man. And everything is running like crazy smooth for the first time they've ever done something. And the biggest thing he kept telling everybody, make sure you have fun out there. Like, he didn't know if he was ever going to do it again. And now they got their own company. But Tony, you know, Tony Khan owns the company, but those boys have got a real chance to create some magic. That's and, awesome. You know, again, you never know who's watching, so put the work in. And if you go back and look at All In, and the weightlifting belt that's around Cody's waist, it says three words, actually four words, put the work in. That's what it says. And so that's what Positively Unstoppable is all about. You know, they, those guys, like, they've been offered a lot of money to go over to the number one company in the world, which is WWE. Like, will they ever be able to have a Monday Night Wars again? I don't know. I just know that what we lived in the 90s, no one ever thought was possible. That I know for sure. But Eric Bischoff saw it. Ted Turner saw it. Now, did I ever believe that we at some point were going to be kicking the WWE's ass? Like, to be honest, not a chance. But as it started to happen, I believed it. And I believed it because I watched it happen. And I watched Hulk tell me really early on, like on that trip that he was on and I was on it, and we were in Europe and in the UK. He said to me, just want you guys to be watching. He goes, I've been a part of this before. We are about to go on another huge tsunami ride. He said, this one might be bigger than the 80s. 
he was right. <laughs> like I couldn't <laughs> like looking back and him, listening to him, like him manifesting that. So, what is positively unstoppable about the art of owning it? Well, um, it can be whatever you want it to be. One thing I want to talk about, I mean, you drop a lot of gems in Positively Unstoppable, which is awesome. But one thing I really love about this book, not just um, that you were not afraid to talk about your own personal stuff, but one thing that you did do, you did show the end result of real life success stories of regular people that actually followed it. You could read a bunch of self-help books, and those self-help books just kind of leave you to your own imagination of what you could be but when you brought real life everyday working class people into this and you get a chance to see their story I mean you get a chance to see that this book is not bullshit <laughs> exactly you know and uh, that's a key insight you know because it, it isn't just like well here's what I did next and then I did that and I overcame this adversity that now I'm going to tell you about those because how can, you know, it's kind of like being an alcoholic. You, people who are alcoholics, they have AA, and they talk amongst themselves because no one can relate to them like they can relate to themselves. You know, like if you've got an issue. And that goes for everything. In this scenario, man, I had a lot of adversity my whole life. You know, I've been faced up against one, you're never going to be able to do this after another. Now, again, I say it over and over again, and, what, and this is my quote. I don't know anyone who's ever said it like this. You know, never underestimate the power you give yourself by believing in you. Like, when you start building the confidence that positively unstoppable can help you have, when you start to build that confidence, well, it, it, it just turns into so many things. Like all of a sudden, once you start believing, you can do it. And then when you start to really do it, you start to believe, well, you can do so many other things. Like you think, the again, example would be Cody Rhodes in the scenario, and I talk about him being a kid. You know, and I'll never forget when he was a sophomore in high school. This su that summer, you know, I said to him, I said, Yo, you're going you're gonna to be a sophomore this year. He said, when do you guys start playing football? He goes, I'm not playing this year. I go, what? This kid plays he's nine years old. You're not going to play football? And he's like, no, nah, not this year. He said, next year, I'm focused. I'm this year, whole year, I'm focusing on wrestling. He goes, next year, my junior year, goes, I'm going to win the state championship. I was like, wow, that's a bold goal. <laughs> Always called them young buck, which is kind of really funny to me. You know, I, mean, I always called them young buck. Sometimes they'll call me it today. But <laughs> um, I said, that's a lot of, that's a lot of, you know, it's a bold statement, young buck. You know, that's going to take you. Goes, I know. You know, I'm going to have to put a lot of work into this. He goes, I'm going to do it. That junior year, he went 48 no and one state champion. Man. So, the next year, he was 12-0 and 0 or 11-0, and 0, and he lost a match. And I was living in L.A., and I called him. Hey, young buck, what's up? He's like, I lost, Alex. I fucking lost. I was like, thank God. <laughs> and it knocked him on his ass. He said, what? Said, Why would you say that? I said, Code, do you think you learn from winning? Dude, you don't learn from winning. You learn from losing, falling down, fucking up. That's right. That's how you learn. I said, let me tell you where you are right now. That kid, he thinks he beat you. I said, he thinks he, he, thinks he owns you. Bottom line is, would you rather have met him in the semifinals you were 46 and 0, mm. and he beat you then. I said, again, he thinks he beat you. I said, bro, now you know where you screwed up. Now you know what you got to do to overcome that adversity. You are 
in the advantage right now. He would face that kid in the semi, I mean, not in semi final, in the finals. The kid was undefeated. I was there both years. Flew in from LA. He ate that kid in the finals. Man. So, was I surprised by everything that's happening? Yes, but not really. Yeah, I've been watching this kid for a long time. He's special. And uh, they didn't see him in New York. They didn't see him in WWE. They thought he was a mid-level guy. Now they know, and well, you don't always pick him, you know? And now it'll be really interesting to see. We'll see where it is and what happens. And it's an exciting time to be a fan. And Cody Rhodes is owning it. <laughs> the Young Bucks? Oh yeah. <laughs> well, DDP, um, I don't want to eat up too much of your time, but I do have to ask this question. You know, when we met and I gave a T-shirt at Motor City Comic Con and we talked for a second, I said it to your face: you are one of the most positive, upbeat people I think I've ever met. And just by talking to you, I felt so much better about myself. And reading about it only reinforced this. I gotta ask, man to man. When did you realize, oh, my God, I need to start writing some of this stuff down. I need to start helping people. Where did that come from? You know, I've been doing it my whole life. But actually, like, writing it down, again, growing up dyslexic, ADD, and reading at a third grade level, page of 30, and I really get into, like, when you decide you're going to learn how to read in your 30s, really challenging. Like, really challenging. (laughs) Um, that's when I started writing stuff down. I, I didn't really write stuff down before that because, you know, the written word was pretty foreign to me. I mean, and even writing, oh my God, writing emails. Like today, I still will have my wife. Like if I'm sending something, like yesterday I sent something to a, a guy who is in the NFL, he's a coach, and he contacted me about my program, not knowing that last night they sent out a press release that now DDP Yoga is partnered up with the NFL alumni. Like, I've been working on that. I've been throwing that in the universe for 10 years, over 10 years. I've been working on it for two straight years. And it finally came to fruition the week before the world the freaking Super Bowl in my hometown here in Atlanta, GA. It all came to fruition. My publicist is like, are you kidding me? Like Radio Row? Like, who does, who's not going to want to talk to GDP about the NFL alumni? And our partnership. And I'm talking to you now. It. You know, it's like a slam dunk. And it gives me a chance to work with these guys. But, you know, I've been telling people positive things and about, because again, people say, hey, like you say, you're the most positive person ever. Like, how do you do it? I work at it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I, I write inspiring things all day long now. But back when I was trying to write, learning to read, you couldn't decipher what I was writing. I mean, I could, but you would have no idea what the fuck I just wrote. Because you couldn't, you would have to have hieroglyphics to, you know, to understand. And that just became pretty good in the last few years. But I still, <laughs> if I'm setting something else, like I was in this coach who's from the NFL, after I sent it, I said, honey, look at this. And she just changed some things, and boom, I sent it off. You know, um, you got to work at it. I always say, and you know I write, I say it all the time, and positively unstoppable. Just don't think it. Think it. Write it down. Burn it into your brain. The more you do something, the more you own it. So, 
Now, that's really what it's all about, my man. And I got a role, and I want to just let people know that if you want to know about the program, go to ddpyoga.com. If you want to know about our new challenge, our Positively Unstoppable Challenge, go to, go to PositivelyUnstoppable.com. We have a challenge going on all over North America, Canada, and the United States. We're looking for two people. Two finalists will be picked out of the thousands that have already signed up. Two people will be picked as finalists who have the best physical transformation and mental transformation. What does that mean? It'll be a Q&A and there will be a essay. Now, if you were like where I was, even today, but you know, yourself, get them to help you write it or have someone write it for you, but have it be your real story. And document everything. Because the contest starts right now. You can't sign up after January 31st. It's locked in. But you can start right now today. It goes to May 31st. Those two contestants that we pick as finals, and I don't even pick the first you know, thousands. I don't go with any of that because I'm too close to my community. We have an outside company picking them. Then they sell, send us like the top five or six or eight or whatever it is, and then we'll pick which is the best. Who have the best stories? Who documented it the, the most thoroughly? And who made that change mentally? Who made that shift? And how did they do it? We're going to give those two finalists an uh, opportunity. We're, fill, we're flying them to Atlanta, GA. We're putting them up at the accountability crib, which today is an Airbnb. Anybody can say the accountability crib, because it's an Airbnb. But I don't live there anymore. But we will put you up at the accountability crib, bring you over to the DDP Yoga Performance Center, and give you the chance to win $1 million. Man. Right? I don't know who's doing that, but I know we are. And we're all about helping people transform. The mission statement of DDP Yoga is to... Get people to think beyond traditional limits, to find inspiration in adversity, and be the most trusted fitness company on the planet. That's who we are. We are successful because we inspire people to believe in themselves. That's what we do. And on that note, my friend, great talking to you. Thanks so much, Good Dallas. Night. I mean, appreciate, just the gems that you, that you gave me, this is awesome. I know you got to run. Thank you for just giving us a little bit of your time. I need them to pick up your book tonight. And, man, this is so much. It is great. Everything can be found at DiamondDollarsPage.com. And um, I'll talk to you soon, my friend. Hey, I appreciate it. And anybody out there... Get the book, go to, you know, they, my book company tells me not to do this, but I want you to get the best deal. Go to Amazon Prime. That's where you get the best deal. And after you get the book, please go back and write me a review. You know, tell me what you really think. I don't want you to tell me what I want to hear. Tell me what you really think. And if you, if, if, if you didn't get what you think out of it, go back and read it again. Because you weren't listening. I got a lot of it. It's all there to help you be the best you you can be. Danny, great talking to you. Talk to you soon, brother. All right. Thanks. Thanks, Dallas.